Welcome. Today, we're going to be reading Crickle Crack, written by Stephen Cosgrove, illustrated by Robin James. It's important to know when to say no. In a green grove of trees grew the strangest tree, the crickle crack tree. The crickle crack tree grew in a twisted profusion and was hidden from casual passerby by a thicket of thorny branches and vines. On this, the crickle crack tree grew a mutated little flowers that only budded and never blossomed. You are never to touch, let alone eat, the blossoms of the crickle crack tree, for if you eat the blossoms, you will grow weak and the tree will grow stronger. But then, this is only a story. Now in this wood also lived a lot of creatures. Partridges and possums, bears and bunnies, and a squirrel named Squeakers. Squeakers was everyone's delight. He would scamper about the branches of the green trees with his long silver tail bobbing behind him, looking hither and thither for a little bit of this and a little bit of that. He chattered to the other creatures as they walked by, telling them of all the wonderful things he had seen that day throughout his travels. Like all the creatures of the woods, Squeakers had been told stories of the crickle crack tree, but like a lot of stories he was told, he didn't quite believe them. One bright sunny morning, as Squeakers was skittering along on his way to school, he came to an odd place in the woods, a place in the woods where it was dark, cool, and mysterious. This is a bit strange, he thought as he scampered between the trees, nervous, nervously peeking here and there. I thought I had seen all that there was to be seen in the forest, yet this seems different and oddly strange. He carefully skipped through the thicket of thorn and vine, and there before him found the oddest tree he'd ever seen. Twisted branches wrapped themselves around the gnarled trunk. Here and there, growing amidst the twisted branches, were tiny, tight, white buds. Hmm, he thought as he walked around and around the tree. This must be the crickle crack tree that mother and father always warned me about. The old gnarled tree seemed to sing as the wind whispered through its tattered leaves. Take a bud from me. Take a bud from me. Squeakers remembered what he had been taught about the crickle crack tree. Don't go near and never, never taste the buds. For the buds are too sweet and you can't eat just one. I wonder, thought Squeakers, how a bud from an innocent singing tree could be too sweet. Maybe I'll try just one. With that, he quickly picked a bud and popped it into his mouth. The bud slowly dissolved, and Squeakers was disappointed to find that it didn't taste sweet at all. If anything, the bud tasted a little bit bitter. As he stood there, savoring the flavor, the crickle crack tree seemed to sigh and creak in glee. Just when Squeakers was sure that all the warnings had been wrong, things around him began to change. The grass seemed to grow a little greener right before his eyes. The songs of the singing birds seemed a little louder. Squeakers began to think that he saw more than he saw and heard more than he heard. Wow, he shouted in exultation. Everyone was wrong. The buds of the crickle crack tree are great. In fact, I think I'll have another. Squeakers ate another bud and then another and another. Soon he was dancing to songs that had never been sung and the crickle crack tree groaned in evil satisfaction. <clears throat> As the forest spun and whirled around him, the day disappeared. Soon, Squeakers found himself in fading darkness as the effects of the buds began to wear off. Oh no, I was supposed to be in school today, he said, and now it's nearly dark. Boy, am I going to be in trouble when I get home. He started to leave and then, as an afterthought, grabbed a couple of crickle crack buds and scampered home. He zipped up the tree and into the bowl where he lived with his mom and dad. As he slipped up the stairs and went into his room, his mother asked him how his day was at school. And the crickle crack bud lied for him and as he said, just fine, mom. Aren't you going to have supper? We're having your favorite, beanberry stew. Oh, Mom, I'm just not hungry. Besides, I ate some hickory nuts with the guys after school, he lied. And with that, he sneaked into his room, delighted with his deception. As he lay on his bed and tried, he lay on his bed and tried to read, but he kept falling asleep. This is no good. I have to read this story or I'll really be in trouble in school tomorrow. Maybe I should eat another bud. 
He popped a bite into his mouth and swallowed it quickly. Just like that, he felt wide awake and red and red, or at least he thought he read. Squeakers, his mother shouted through the door. It's time for bed. Better put out your candle. As he was told, Squeaker put out the candle and tried to fall asleep. But no matter how he tried, he couldn't sleep, and he lay on his bed and tossed and turned in the shadowed moonlight. Finally, at nearly the crack of dawn, he fell into a fitful sleep filled with nightmares of an evil tree knocking and scraping at his windowsill. Squeakers woke from his sleep, but he felt like he had never slept at all. He looked terrible. He had big black circles under his eyes, and his tail kind of drooped. He was pooped. Squeakers grabbed his books and dashed out of the tree, heading for school. He ran down the path, right past the thorny vine entrance to the secret place of the crickle crack tree. He hadn't planned on going back. If anything, he had resolved never ever to resolve never ever to touch the crickle crack blossom again. But the tree sang its song and Squeakers stopped to listen. He crawled through the vines that tore at his fur and looked at the ugly tree. I can't miss school again, he cried. Then he grabbed a handful of buds, slipped through the hedge, and scurried to school. As he ran, one of the buds fell from his furry paw to the side of the path. He got to school in the nick of time and hurriedly took his place on the log as the teacher began the lesson. Squeakers tried to pay attention, but his mind kept falling asleep. Then he remembered the crickle crack buds in his hand and popped one into his mouth. Just like that, he was wide awake and bushy-tailed again. His mind wandered and he thought of silly things and he began to giggle out loud. All the other creatures in class looked at Squeakers oddly, then tried to ignore him, but his laughter became louder still. Finally, the teacher ordered him to stand in the corner of the oak tree until he could stop his giggling. Squeakers thought this was even funnier yet, and so he laughed and laughed with his nose pushed into the bark of the wise old tree. Every time he would stop laughing, he would pop another bud in his mouth, and the whole process would start all over again. Recess came, then lunch, and still Squeaker stood at the tree giggling crazily. The other kids in school didn't know what to think. Squeakers had always been such a good student. Finally, one of the bunnies hopped to where he was standing and said, Why are you laughing? What could be so funny that you would want to be punished all day? Ho, 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 laughed Squeakers. It's not a what, it's an it. What's an it, asked the bunny, totally confused. These are it. And with that, Squeakers held, it, held out his paw and showed the bunny a stash of crickle crack buds. You can have one too. He tried to give a bud to the bunny, but the bunny wisely refused. So Squeaker shoved the rest of the buds in his mouth. The little bunny knew there was something wrong and told the teacher, who told Squeaker's parents who came rushing to school. Squeaker's head began to reel and the world began to spin around and around and around. This poor little squirrel was very sick indeed. I'm so sorry, Mother. I never met any harm, Squeakers cried as his mother held him very close, rocking back and forth as he told the truth about the tree. His father angrily said, The crickle track tree should have been cut down years ago. Come, we must all destroy the evil tree and all the buds that grow on it. And with that, all the older creatures of the wood marched from the clearing with axes or sputtering torches held high. <coughs> They marched to the thorny thicket and forced their way inside. There, they chopped and hacked at the tree until it was nothing more than a pile of rotten wood. Gather all the buds and throw them on the pile, shouted Squeaker's father. Everything must be burned so that all the temptation of the crickle crack tree is gone forever. When all was piled high, the animals set the chopped tree on fire and stood back safely, watching the oily smoke rise into the darkening sky. They watched and watched until all was burned to a fine gray ash. Then, to make absolutely sure that every bit of the tree was destroyed, they even buried the ash. Satisfied that the tree was destroyed, all went back to normal in the wood. Squeaker slowly recovered from the effects of the buds and understood that it had been wrong to take them. The love and understanding of his parents and neighbors had helped him see how bad the tree was and how the buds had hurt him. All went back to normal. But near the path, beneath a bit of thorny thicket, a tiny white bud that would never blossom thrust its shoots into the ground and a new crickle crack tree began to grow. As you grow and as you see, don't be tempted by the crickle crack tree. The end. 
And that's it for today's episode of Storytime with Jen. We will see you tomorrow.